powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the 530 News on Q2, Montana's news leader. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Russ Riesinger. And I'm Janelle Slade. A public health water warning sends Huntley Project schools into action and the community steps up to help. As the school bell rang for the first time this year, Huntley Project students were met with signs and warnings, but also solutions in place to keep their bodies hydrated and their schoolwork on track. This less than 24 hours after the communities of Warden and Ballantyne were told to not drink the water due to high nitrate levels. Because Huntley Project schools are located in Warden, this also impacts more than 600 students and staff. And we want to be clear, this health advisory does not affect the town of Huntley, which is on a separate water system. Well, we sent Q2's David J out to Warden to show us how the school responded today. David. Well, Janelle Russ, uh, tap water was turned off and there's Plenty of fresh drinking water for all the students to fill their bottles. School personnel have added 19 water dispensers all around the high school, middle school, and elementary school. There are spots near drinking fountains and at places for the athletes. Some donations have come in for both water bottles and the, the water. Superintendent Mark Wandel says the school brought in 48 five-gallon bottles or 240 gallons of water. About 180 gallons was used today, and Wandel plans on bringing about the same amount tomorrow. We can still wash with it. Our our facilities are running otherwise. Uh, probably the biggest impacts are for the kids to get water each day. And then in the kitchen, we're having to cook with bottled water and wash all of our produce with bottled water. So all those things, so th that's some inconveniences, but we pulled off all of our lunches and all of our students ended up getting water today. And Mark Wandel says it's too early to know how much it's going to cost each day for bottled water. He says the school district will determine if this is the best way to go or if it's a long term, maybe a filtration system might be more economical. Russ, do you know? All right, thanks, David. So the message, drink bottled water. Yes, now the Warden Ballantyne Yellowstone County Water District has been impacted by contaminated surface water, but experts do not yet know the source. Current disinfection and chlorine treatment strategies are not working, and boiling the water will also not disinfect it. Experts tell Q2 today that reverse osmosis and home filtration systems will work. A public meeting is set for 6 p.m. Monday, August 26th at Huntley Project High School. State, county, and district officials will be on hand to answer questions. Well, here in Billings, School District 2 is in session tomorrow. But before school officially gets underway, Q2's Rob Griggs takes us to school on what you need to know about traffic laws and school buses. Yes, we're back to school time and there is a procedure when it comes to school buses. Let's go ahead and bone up on those again. Now understand the basic rule of state law is when you see the flashing amber lights come on, you need to be prepared to stop because the bus will be stopping in about 150 feet. Now you need to know that tickets are issued to those who try to pass the bus when those yellow amber flashing lights are on. So don't try to rush the bus. Now once the flashing red lights and the stop sign come out, if you're following, you've got to be stopped behind the bus a good 30 feet or two car lengths behind. And if you're in oncoming traffic, you've got to be in front of that bus again, 30 feet or up to two car lengths. And that goes all the way out to four lanes, unless of course there's a physical bar uh, barrier between those lanes. And then wait until the bus resumes travel before you continue. Just be very careful. Now when we get into the school zones, remember all summer long we've been just trotting right along, but it's time to slow down, watch for crossing guards, Mind the speed limits, watch for students, speeds will be re uh, reduced, and if you see a violation, state law encourages you to jot down a license number and a description and turn them into the police because the ultimate goal, again, is to keep kids safe. So if we all follow those rules, we're going to have a wonderful kickoff to the school season. Back to the desk. Thanks so much, Rob. All right, Bob McGuire joining us now. Bob, how's the weather shaping up for uh, the first day of classes? <laughs> That's a $64,000 question. I think it's going to be okay for the kids initially. Uh, it's just going to be actually a pretty nice morning for them. Take a look at this. Here's what our forecast model is showing. Uh, off to school, it's going to be about 68 degrees with partly cloudy skies. Really not a bad day. You notice red, the red stop signs out. you got to stop there. Meanwhile, what about when the kids come home? Well, here's what we see coming our way. Uh, maybe some showers and thunderstorms moving in. About 87 degrees. This will be a new cold front moving through. So so the temperatures will be in the process of uh, dropping down. So that's what we're going to see. Just some uh, kind of nice day going to school. That'll be perfect dropping off the kids. But when they come back, you may want to be there to pick them up at the bus stop as well because it's going to be kind of wet as we head into the afternoon. We'll have more on the week's forecast coming up in a few more minutes. 
All right, thanks so much, Bob. Well, the Musashoal County deputies have discovered a fourth bull elk poached and left to rot in the southwestern part of the county. Take a look. This bull elk was discovered about 25 miles from where three other poached elk were found two days ago. If you have any information about any of these crimes, call either of the numbers on your screen. You can also find those at ktvq.com. The Musashoal County Sheriff says the county has 650 miles of back roads spread over nearly 2,000 miles, and that's why they're asking the public for help to find the culprit. When it comes to health care costs, everyone knows that hospitals are an expensive piece of the overall pie in America and Montana. But a recent national study of prices paid by privately insured patients shows that Montana hospitals are even more expensive than the norm. MTN's Mike Dennison takes a closer look at that study. The Rand Corporation examined what privately insured patients pay at hospitals in 25 states using data from employers paying the bills from 2015 through 2017. On average, these patients paid 2.4 times what Medicare pays, and in Montana, it was 2.77 times Medicare, the fifth highest among the states studied. We asked Montana hospitals if this markup means these patients are being overcharged. The data just don't support the allegation. We essentially are within 2% higher, low, above break even. So that tells me that you're not gouging patients. If you had uh, collections that were far and above your costs, you could make the argument that the charges are too high, what they're collecting is too high, that patients are paying too much. But if the hospitals are just covering costs, is their major expense personnel too high? Olson doesn't believe so, saying Montana hospitals pay 83 to 85 percent of the national average for skilled personnel. So we asked the state's largest health insurer, Blue Cross and Blue Shield, why it doesn't negotiate a lower multiple of Medicare charges. Spokesman John Doran wouldn't answer that question directly. Instead, he talked about Blue Cross's ongoing effort to implement something called value-based pricing. We're fundamentally changing that to re-engage people in a primary care setting, which is a much more cost-effective model than going to the emergency room. So it's not about limiting health care services, it's about finding the appropriate care at the right time in the right place and for the right price. Under value-based pricing, Blue Cross pays a capped amount for certain services for a set of patients, and the provider must keep costs under that cap. Doran says this approach saved $400 a year for each of the 100,000 Blue Cross customers it covers. But an author of the RAND study calls value-based pricing a distraction from the easier solution. Insurers directing customers to lower-priced hospitals or just paying less. At the last Montana legislature, Democratic State Representative Tom Woods of Bozeman proposed a bill meant to limit payments to hospitals by private payers to 250 percent of Medicare. We're not talking about bankrupting hospitals. We're not talking about controlling their prices. What we're talking about is trying to get them to stop screwing us. Hospitals lobbied against the bill and it died on the House floor, with an equal number of Democrats and Republicans voting against it. Montana hospitals have generally fought attempts to regulate their pricing practices, but insist they're serious about controlling costs and say they're trying to encourage people to lead healthier lives and use fewer costly services. The hospitals aren't, aren't, aren't deaf to the struggles for health care costs or for access. And I think that the hospitals are doing their part to make sure that where they can economize or where they can cut costs, they're doing that. As you can see, solving the high cost of hospitals and health care is a complex question. But the study said, essentially, the solution should be simple. Someone must demand lower prices if we have any hope to control costs. Reporting from Helena, Mike Dennison, MTN News. Well, the Rand Corporation study says it was one of the first of its kind to examine hospital pricing. And there's more news from across our state on tonight's MTN 9 o'clock news. Here's a look ahead. I'm Andrea Lutz. We're tracking all the big stories happening across the state of Montana tonight. And Bob McGuire has your full forecast. Join us tonight on the MTN 9 o'clock news on the CW. Uh, first, still to come on tonight's 530 news, dangerous algae blooms have been found their way to Montana bodies of water. We're going to take a look at a shepherd company working on possible solutions. And in sports, our 14 teams in 14 days football preview lands in big timber. Scott shows us what to expect from the herders. You're watching MTN News with Janelle Slade and Russ Riesinger. Storm Tracker weather with Bob McGuire and sports with Scott Breen. This is the 530 News on Q2, Montana's news leader.